I uh, write down the date and time every time I go poop. I have done so for the last, I think, four years. So when I was a kid, uh, me and my brothers, we used to uh, eat our grandfather's cigar ashes. We used to eat a bunch of other weird stuff like talcum powder, tree bark. But yeah, no, the cigar ashes, they, uh, they had such a distinguished flavor to them. So uh, that's probably why I smoke now. <laughs> I'm in love with my best friend. I've had a crush on one of my closest friends for like two years now. I still have feelings for my high school ex. I'm still in love with my ex. Um, my ex-boyfriend lit my house on fire. Okay, so this one time I was out in West Hollywood with a friend. She got really drunk, so I brought her home and she started throwing up right in my living room and I held her hair back. But the smell was so bad that I ended up throwing up on her head and I never had the guts to tell her about it. <laughs> So once in college, I was sitting near my English professor and he had a long sticker on his butt cheek that had the pants eyes and I kept trying to single, uh, signal to him that he had it on and I kept pointing to his butt cheek and he didn't really get it and then I kind of just started pointing to mine and then he started getting flustered and admittedly kind of uncomfortable and he really wouldn't get it and so then I just kind of like got closer to him and like kind of like turned my body and kind of showed him like kind of my butt cheek area and pointed to mine and then to his and then he finally got it but it kind of took a second and I'm pretty sure he thought that I was trying to hit on him in a really horrible way in front of everybody so English class okay I think that I've honestly peed my pants more than like the average adult person has peed their pants in their life like probably five times since I've turned 18. It's just who I am. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so when I was little, I never thought the happiest place on earth was Disneyland. I always thought it was McDonald's and Disneyland was second. So when I was little, my dream job was to work at McDonald's, specifically to make the french fries and work in the window. It's like the happiest place on earth, like it had the playground and then they had the fries and the little Happy Meal toys and then it was just, it, it had everything. Uh, when I was a kid, I still do this, whenever I'm at museums or like exhibits and stuff, I always try and touch every single thing especially when it says no touch. Uh, once I stole a really cool looking napkin ring from an open house when I was like eight years old and I felt so bad, I wrote a letter to the homeowners association telling them I was sorry. My best friend told me that he was in love with me and I felt the same way, but I never told him that I loved him too. When I was 15, I was in a school shooting at my high school and I feel like I never fully um, got over my PTSD and every day I live, I always have a fear that somewhere something is gonna happen again. Um, I say I don't like children and I don't want them ever, but I think I'm just secretly afraid I'll mess them up like my parents messed me up. One secret that I don't really tell people, except for my closest friends, is that I have really bad social anxiety. I've gotten really good at pretending like I'm really social, but I'm actually not. And I'm always viewing myself through other people's eyes, and it's really stressful, so on this trip with my friends, I'm trying to just be myself and like not think about anything too much. So I am a trans woman and I have not come out to uh, a whole lot of people yet. Um, so yeah, and my name is Isabella. So all my life I've really sacrificed everything for everyone else, um, doing all I could to make everyone happy and feel loved. And um, 
that was okay up until like the other day my mom told me that she didn't want me in her life and that I was a mess and basically saying I wasn't lovable and I kind of just realized that making those sacrifices aren't always deserved um, and I do love her but I'm gonna live my life for me even if it scares me even if it doesn't get approval from anyone else because this is my life um, and that's a very difficult realization. This is a, a little bit of a, a secret that I've had since I was a lot younger. Um, I've always kind of struggled internally with like masculine and feminine energy. I've always been told that I need to be you know, like way more masculine and uh, not so like sensitive and, and not so feminine, uh, according to like a lot of my you know cultural upbringing and stuff. So uh, it was something that I used to struggle with a lot. And um, as as a kid, I did a lot of martial arts. I used to literally go into my uh, go to my mom's like closet and gra grab all her like a bunch of her clothes and uh, put on all of her clothes and then hit the crap out of stuff to try to like kill like the feminine energy inside of me. Yeah, it was, it was always really, really tough. But as I got older, I kind of accepted that a whole lot more. And uh, I actually ended up opening up a, a Muay Thai gym to where I can have like a, a really safe space to be both, to let out my masculine energy when needed and uh, retain my feminine being as I am without feeling judged or without feeling bad about myself. Um. My dad, my parents disowned me when I was 18 for not being Christian. I'm 25 now and I've done a lot of healing and um, made a lot of progress in forgiveness, but I kind of wear this face that I don't give a f that they disown me, that I don't care, that, you know, I, that I hate them, but deep down it want more than anything to my dad just to tell me that he loves me. So when I was 16 years old, I was with my boyfriend. I realized that I accidentally got pregnant. I thought my parents were going to take it well because they're very liberal. And it was kind of the contrary. They were extremely disappointed with me and they immediately shut me down. I didn't feel supported whatsoever, so of course I decided to abort. And uh, as soon as I decided that, they told me that under absolutely no circumstance I was to ever told, tell anyone about my abortion and about the whole experience. Not my best friends, not my friends, not even my boyfriend, not my brother, not my family members no one. So I felt absolutely alone at 16 years old and I felt like I've been carrying this absolutely massive secret with me uh, because I was even told to lie during in, in medical records when I went to the gynecologist and still many people in my life don't know that I went through this at 16 years old. Even my brother, my uncle, my aunt and many of my friends. Hey everyone, I just want to let you know that I recently published a book, it's called A Book of Secrets, and basically it's just a collection of secrets from strangers all around the world. So if you're interested and you want a copy, I'll have it linked in my description. Thank you for watching this episode, I love you all, and I'll see you next time.